Join us in building a more fair and transparent future. Visit ParticiaBlockchain.com today. Welcome to Decrypt, the series that decodes and demystifies everything blockchain, crypto finance, and cybersecurity. Today, we welcome an amazing 29-year-old cybersecurity expert from the world's premier provider of cybercrime intelligence. She's a truly global citizen with Eastern European roots and today specializing in dark web crime. Her job is focused on infiltrating and maintaining access to underground communities where threat actors collaborate, communicate, and plan cyber attacks. Lillian Dolgalenko, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, Jennifer. So first of all, tell us about the dark web. What is it, and is it really a hotbed for illegal activities? So I'll say the short answer, which is yes, it is a hotbed for activities, but um, it's a lot more complex than that, right? You really have to look at uh, the full internet as a source, right? So we've got three different components of the internet. Open web is something that we're all familiar with. We're accessing on a daily basis. Tell me one person that doesn't Google something each day, right? That's something that you can easily find on the internet. Deep web is something we also access, something that you actually have to log into. Um, there's a certain barrier to entry versus just easily searching for it. And the final layer is the dark web. Right, so the dark web is actually something you access through an alter alternative browser called Tor Hidden Services. And there's a lot more layers to anonymity, so threat actors prefer it to communicate with each other. So Lillian, how would you compare the dark web to the internet that we use today in terms of activity and breadth? It's actually a, a network, right? There's websites that are very similar to what we access when you do your own shopping. There's fancy banners, right, flashy signs, you know, come look at what I'm offering access for sale. Um, so I think in a general sense, right, the way that we operate on our day to day and the way that threat actors operate on their day to day is, is very, very similar. But there's two components within kind of these illicit communities. There's the physical side, which is the prime target for law enforcement because they deal with firearms, bombs, drug paraphernalia, you name it, right? There's a lot of physical goods and then there's the the cyber side, and they're focused on identifying different collaborators, partnerships, or just going on to sell their tools, techniques, share their techniques and, and tactics that they're going after organizations. So can you give us a concrete example of this, and should it be concerning for us? We need to be focusing on our digital footprint. Why are threat actors able to do this, right? Because we're posting a picture on social media of our bank account information. Um, the digital you know, age is certainly increasing and ever growing, and it's up to us to further protect ourselves to ensure that these threat actors in these certain communities, we don't make it easy for them to, to get into the next layer. You just published a report about the Conti Group. What can you tell us about this group? Well, I will say Conti has been a, a ransomware affiliate program. It's one of the top ones, although it seems like um, you know, we're, we're tracking new ones every single day. They're one of the top, top groups that we've been tracking over the past couple of years. And the reason why this one is very interesting is, is to really kind of explain to you all the ransomware affiliate program, right? Um, when you are a ransomware affiliate program, it's not just you. Consider yourself like ransomware incorporated. You've got your marketing department marketing out your ransomware. You've got your operations team. You've got your sales team and you've got your customer success. So it's almost like a corporate structure where they're engaging with threat actors and engaging with victims. Uh, and it's certainly a phenomenon that's been you know, around media these days because they, they have these blogs where they name and shame. Women represent only 11% of the cyber workforce today. Is this the same in your business of cybercrime and threat intelligence? And what's your message to women to get them to join the to join the war against cybercrime? So I will say very proudly, um, I would compare threat intelligence as kind of one of the top security teams with more women. Within threat intelligence, it's true to its name, right? Or cybercrime. You are looking at not just the tactics, tools threat actors are using. You're looking at the people. So you really need to understand, you know, who are these people? Behavioral psychologists, right? I've seen them on threat intelligence team. Financial advisors, people that can understand the financial network. So. Anybody with kind of the hunger and the, the um, affinity to track these bad guys and to take them down, I would certainly say that's an open door to, to join the threat intelligence industry. Thank you, Lillian Dolgolenko, for decrypting the deep and dark web for us. And join us next week when we will be discussing the boom in cryptocurrency philanthropy up already 1,000% 1, in 2021. Thanks and goodbye, everyone. Partizia Blockchain, infrastructure for the greater good.